Hello, everybody. It is Lori Ballin here with Ballin Vegas, your Las Vegas and Henderson real estate team, and Ballin Brand, your digital marketing company and real estate websites. I'm excited today to be here with Dan Kenny, and today we're going to really hit hard on open houses and geographic farming. Now, prior to his career in real estate, Dan spent over 20 years in the restaurant industry as a server, manager, trainer, and customer service specialist. He worked in fine dining restaurants all over the country, including several years at a top steakhouse just off the magnificent mile in downtown Chicago. He also spent several years working as a professional stage actor, which my daughter's going to love, performing on stages around the country and across the globe, including performances in Stratford, England, and Japan. In Chicago, Dan performed in productions at the Goodman Theater, Victoria Gardens Theater, Looking Glass Theater, and numerous productions with the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. Now, I tell you all that because now you're going, hmm, well, why real estate? Well, we're going to let Dan tell you a little bit about that. But Dan recently completed his third full year, just three years, third full year as a licensed real estate agent, closing 39 transactions with a volume of over $16 million. He's now forming the Dan Kenny Group, has a full-time administrative assistant, and is currently interviewing for other full-time admin and a buyer's agent. The majority of Dan's business comes from geographic farming and open houses, which we're going to talk about today, and he regularly teaches a class on high-level open houses based on the seventh-level open house system from the book Shift. Dan serves in the area, suburbs of Chicago, Homer Glen, Lockport, Limont, New Lenox and Orland Park, number one market share in Homer Glen for the last couple of years. Um, so welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. It's a huge uh, pleasure and privilege to be on your show. Um, I actually uh, I actually first encountered you uh, three years ago at my very first family reunion, and you were teaching a, a breakout session on I probably – SEO or, or social media. However, at the beginning of that session, you started talking about uh, micro farming and um, uh, going hyper local. And I had just moved to a, a beautiful area in uh, the southwest suburbs of Chicago. And I decided when I got back from that family reunion, I was going to plant the seeds uh, for a geographic farm uh, using your your technique. So you were my inspiration to start that. And so it's a great pleasure to talk to you and, and tell you how that's turned out three years later. Wow, that's fantastic. I didn't know that. I, I breezed over your little form that you submitted here and I saw that. <laughs> I saw that in your write-up and I said, I did not realize that when I chose him for the for the inter interview. Yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that I was... Um, I was uh, doing an SEO class or something, and and absolutely 100%, I believe that we can take hyper local geographic farming strategies and apply those to our online efforts and combine them with physical efforts. Now, I'll tell you, I made a, a, a terrible mistake. I'm always sharing my fail forward stories, and and um, I'm sure you'll appreciate this. My mistake was I went too big, too fast, too hard at my geographic farm with the offline stuff and spent uh -huh. way, way, way too much money on um, direct mail. And really, even though I played out the math, I overestimated the response from direct mail. I thought it would happen quicker. And with the expense that I was spending, uh -huh. it was just, you know, I took on, I was sponsoring softball teams and I was just doing too much. So it lasted six months and I, I, and I got a couple listings, but I had to stop because I just spent too much too fast. So you're going to talk a little bit today about your geographic farming um, strategies and what those entail, whether or not they include direct mail or not. I don't know. You're going to talk about that. But I thought I would share my fail forward story that with geographic farming, it takes time. And whether that's online geographic farming or offline geographic farming, it takes time to see a return. But you are, are might even be an exception to the rule with having closed 16 million in your third year with 64% of that being open houses and geographic farming. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, tell us why you got into real estate, maybe why you picked Keller Williams as your company here. You are with Keller Williams, right? That's what I saw. Yeah. Um, I, I am correct. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just talk to us about um, your step into real estate and then, um, you know, 
what where you're learning some of your strategies besides my little um sure. in there and then let's break it down for <laughs> the that actually want to want to be like you so tell us why you got into real estate absolutely so I, I first got into real estate when we moved from the city to the suburbs um because at the time my wife was pregnant with our first child and i didn't want to raise our child children in the city and I was also working very late hours in restaurants, which wasn't very conducive to a family life. And it was actually the move itself that kind of inspired me to get into real estate because I had one broker in the city who sold my condo and a different broker in the suburbs who helped us purchase our home. And the experiences were uh, night and day in terms of quality of, uh, of the experience. The agent in the city who helped me sell my condo was on top of his game, he was amazing. We had, he, we had an offer, we had multiple offers within the first two weeks and uh, really felt well taken care of. And ironically, in retrospect, I hired him because of his farming uh, strategy, because I used to get a postcard from him every month, which I would throw away, of course, until <laughs> I was ready to sell. And then I was like, hey, where's that guy's postcard? And so ironically, uh, that, that he had the farming strategy that I'm now uh, now doing. Then we had um, a very different agent in the suburbs who wasn't as on top of her game. And uh, I basically said, you know what, I could do I, I could do better than this. <laughs> so I immediately got my license and uh, joined KW. I didn't interview with any other company. I heard they had the best training, and I'm a very learning, training based person. And um, dove right in. Have not have not looked back. So that's kind of how I made the the transition into it um, and what happened at, at the beginning um, so you know I, I started the farming as I told you at being inspired uh, from you however that wasn't going to give me immediate business as you pointed out it's farming is a get rich slow strategy it, it takes a while before you start seeing the fruits of that harvest so I needed immediate business and I was in my first session of ignite and uh, that particular session happened to be on open houses. And at the time, I also found out in that first session of Ignite um, that I, there's, I was suffering under a bit of a delusion about what it meant to be a real estate agent. I thought to be a real estate agent, you got your license, you joined a company, they gave you a desk, and then people walked through the door looking to buy or sell real estate, and you simply said, hi, how may I help you? And uh, I quickly found out in that first Ignite that there was this other thing involved called lead generation. Um, and I started freaking out because I didn't sign up to, to be on the phone all day. <laughs> it was not something I wanted to do. Um, however, what I, I realized in this class was that open houses actually are a form of lead generation. And they are actually kind of like that delusion where people are walking through the door looking to buy or sell real estate. And you simply say, Hi, how may I help you? So I immediately started doing open houses every week. And for the first two years, all of my business came from open houses. That was my only source of lead generation for the first two years in the business. Wow. You know, it, what I love, I love a lot of things that you just said, and I'm going to pull out all those nuggets when I do the transcript, because it's so true that people do get this, this disillusion uh, I'm going to become a real estate agent and the business is just going to be there. And it's absolutely not true. You have to go, you have to pick a lead generation strategy or two and give it everything you got. You have to model other successful people and you have to be so disciplined and so focused and not quit five minutes before the miracle happens. So all of that is a hundred percent spot on. So you're, 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 you're saying that the geographic farm was going to be a long game and you knew that. So you specifically went out after open houses in your first two years, all your money came off off of open houses, which is phenomenal. And something I would highly recommend to a new agent because, or an experienced agent who isn't paying their bills, you know, a lot of experienced agents could learn from this as well. Um, you know, it doesn't take a lot of money to do open houses. So this is something you can get really focused on, really sink your teeth into, create a great plan around and not have to put out a lot of money. So tell me, you're getting started in open houses. How did you know what the heck to do? Sure. So 
I, I basically did, when I first started, what I learned in that class in Ignite. And they, and they used to have an entire session of Ignite on open houses. That's no longer the case, but it was when I first started. And what they looked at was uh, something called the seventh level open house, which is from the book Shift by Gary Keller. I'm sure you've read it. And there's a, um, a chart in there that shows the seventh level marketing system for an open house. And so, you know, most realtors, you know, put a sign in the yard, and put a balloon on the sign, and that's about where their preparation for the open house starts, stops. You know, that, that's about all they do. Yeah. The seventh level system, you're doing, you're starting a week in advance. You're, uh, you're doing call around on the house. You're doing social media marketing for the open house. You're doing mailings for the open house. You're doing door knocking for the open house. Your, your, your entire week that, 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 that week, your entire job is lead generating for the open house. The whole goal is just to get people to the open house and then you can convert them uh, into clients. And so I, I typically, when I first started out, my first open house, I had 12 people through, which I thought was horrible. My lender told me it was one of the best open houses she'd ever been to. And now I average between 20 to 40 people up for every open house. And I typically walk out with my appointments set for the week. Wow. Okay. Let's, let's really break that down into, into some bite size, um, snacks here people can chew on so the first that was a terrible metaphor <laughs> great <laughs> let's just have a meal together dan while we're on this call i i, I get you i get where you come from <laughs> okay so <laughs> let's take let's take your i've got an open house i'm an agent i've got an open house it's either my listing or maybe it's somebody else's listing that they've offered to let me go ahead and sit their open house so first thing is sure. Am, are you strategically planning? Did you say a week in advance? At least, yes. You want to start at least in advance. At What's least. your typical practice? How do you know, like when you're sitting down to pick open houses? So, first of all, how do you pick them? Are they your listings or are they somebody else's? Sure. When I first started, obviously I didn't have any listings, so they had to be other agents' listings. Now I do them with all of my listings, and it actually starts earlier than a week before it now starts at the listing appointment. I set the expectation at the listing appointment that open houses are a huge part of my strategy to get their home sold. And as soon as we sign those listing papers, I pull out my calendar and I say, when are we gonna do the first open house? So I start well in advance of the open house and get it on the calendar. And then it begins at least the, a week before we get it in the MLS so that it aggregates out to all the other uh, you know, websites as well. We are going to post on social media hold on. and do let, boosted let, posts or let me yeah. hold you one second. Cause I want to be real specific on those. So, so going back to how you're sure. selecting an open house, you're selecting the open house at the listing appointment. You're scheduling the first one. Are you, um, yeah. how many, how many open houses are you holding a week? At least one, at least at, one per week. At least one. Okay. And do you have a day of the week that you find is best for you for open houses? I prefer Sundays um, only because Saturdays are the days that usually people at the end of the week and they're working around the house or they're hanging out at home, uh, working in the yard. Actually, a great day for door knocking is Saturdays because people are usually home hanging out. Yeah. Um, Sundays are the days I have found that people – you know, get dressed up and go to church and go out to breakfast and go visit family. So they're already out and about. So, however, I've done Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Sundays, attendance does go down during football season around here, though, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so um, so I'm assuming Sunday afternoons. Are you doing like an 11 to 3 or something? Uh, usually 1 to 4. 1 to 4. So right in the middle of the day. Okay. Now, next, you've got you you set the date, and um, you said something. You started to say you were going to post this online. So, are you first going into the open house and setting? I mean, into the MLS and setting an open house, and then what other online um, websites are you going to to post your open houses? Sure. So, from the MLS, it's going to filter out to. You know, all the big ones, Zillow, Trulia, and Redfin, and all those. Um, we also do a Craigslist posting. 
Um, we also do a uh, Facebook uh, post that we're going to boost or a Facebook ad. Um, and we're going to boost that in the zip code around, and not only the zip code where the open house is, but the zip codes around it because we have people moving from other zip codes into our zip code. Um, we also do local uh, buy, sell, trade uh, Facebook groups in all the surrounding suburbs. I'm members of those, and I always post the, the Facebook, uh, the, the, uh, the open house posts in there as well. Great. Are you on, do you guys have next door in your area? Um, I think we do, and that's something I'm not using. Is that a, is that something that's yeah? I've, that's I've just I just really started. Um, I'm not doing advertising in there just yet because I wanted to kind of explore how pe what the dialogue's like. It's a social network, just like very much like Facebook, but it's all specifically geared around neighborhoods. And so the only way you can get into okay. a next door group is to be, have an address registered that's in that group. So it's fantastic for like geographic farming if you live in that area or for an open house if you live yeah. in that area. So you're not just going to be able to go blast everywhere, but there is advertising. So I'm going to actually do a test on the advertising because you can advertise and it's in a different group. And I'll do some training and do some reports back on that. But I'm thinking for open houses, this can be a pretty powerful um, platform. I've just started talking to a couple of people that are doing next door at a pretty high level and they're, they're swearing by it. So, and, and being that it's so local, right. so hyper local, I would think real estate could really benefit if we did it strategically, not spammy, you know? A absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So your, um, your Facebook ads, your Craigslist ads and all that, are you able to track any of uh, when your people are coming in the door well, let me ask you this. When they come in the door, are they signing in anywhere or using an iPad or how, what is your process once they get there? For, let's start with how, what's your process for finding out how they heard about you? Sure. I, I usually ask them uh, how they heard about us. And I, I used to do a sign-in sheet and I no longer do that um, simply because, well, I do it as a formality. And it's really because I was finding the information people was, was putting down was not uh, correct or they wrote it illegibly. So there's no way I could figure out what it was. Um, so what I do is have them sign in and then I ask them a question that I learned from Chris Suarez. Do you know Chris? I'm oh, yes, guessing. absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So so he's he I learned a lot from him about open houses. And, and he has this wonderful question that you ask as soon as people walk in the door, which is, are you out shopping for a home today or do you happen to live in the area? And it's a really simple question. And, you know, they're going to either going to say, I'm out shopping for a home today. Great. You know, you're working with a buyer or they say, no, I happen to live in the neighborhood. Great. You know, you're working with a seller. And at that point, I basically kind of let them go. It's very no pressure. I, I let them kind of walk around the open house. I tell them there's food here. There's we have music and I'll check in with you later. And then when I check in with them later, I go a little deeper and I have a, a very natural, non-pressure conversation with them that eventually leads to them seeking something of value for me, either uh, a market analysis on their home or other properties that are for sale in the area. And at that point is when I usually ask for their correct contact information. And that's usually when they give me the contact information correctly. Okay. So what I hear, I have two, I have this little, um, thing in my head going back and forth these little voices and one is saying that's so good and that's fantastic i love chris's question and chris is the king of open house is amazing um i love yeah. all that i love your non-pressure approach I, the my lead generation side the marketing side of me is going oh my gosh you're yeah. you're not you're not capturing their info you're not there's so you've got some people probably walking out the door that could be potentials that there's no way you can talk to everybody sure. at the same time so my thought just goes to yeah. have, have you tried any sort of a, I know that you get bogus information. It's a numbers game. Same, same with what I do with web leads. We're going to get Fred yeah. Stone and Donald Duck. We got to count on the ones that do end up yeah. getting this good information. Have you done a giveaway, gift basket, sure. gas cards or anything like that to at least, and then put a little mark on there. It says, how did you hear about us? So you can track whether Craigslist is working or Facebook is working or. Um, I have done giveaway and that, that you are correct. You, you're going to get more complete contact information that way. For sure. Well, my thing is not, um, just, not just getting, I do. go ahead. Yeah. 
Well, I'm going to say that I, I do um, I do still have them sign in, and, and I do check those numbers. It's you, uh, my my experience has been though the ones that I actually make the contact with uh, there is when I get the the highest co correct contact info, and you will oh. book an appointment on the spot. Yeah, um, but there's no doubt you're. And in terms of being, sorry, we've just got a delay. Oh, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> we got a delay there. What what your 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 easiest to convert leads are always going to be the people that that raise their hand in some fashion. It's just like with me with web leads. It's the people that actually call that we have the highest percentage of actually converting because they're saying, hey, I want to talk to you. But yet I still want to get the sure. info on the ones that, that didn't raise their hand at that moment because they're probably still potentials later on. And my experience with open houses, even though it was forever ago, my absolute best ever was when we gave away a gorgeous looking gift basket that that um, title or somebody would donate or a home stager or plumbers or the, the cleaners of the house or whatever would donate with their branding on it and whatnot. So it didn't cost me anything and that or a gas card. And then the key for me was even if I don't talk to any of these people, I want to know how they heard about us. That was my goal back then. I, if their phone number could be bad, their email could be bad, but I need to know how that person heard about us so I know what marketing I'm doing is working, bringing in. So that's my marketing director hat on more than my salesperson hat on because I just wanted that info. So just out, it's, cur it's curious because wouldn't you, wouldn't you wonder like, oh my gosh, well, if it's coming from Facebook, then I can actually check my reach. And if I didn't spend enough to reach everybody, but I know my highest traffic's coming from Facebook, I can throw a few more bucks at those Facebook ads and get another five people through the door. You know, that's just the marketing side of me, not the not the sales side. So my, my oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I do I do ask where everybody heard about us. And 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 to be honest, the majority is Facebook. Um, and that's been the, the biggest impact really on my open houses, getting people there, and also on my, my farming strategy because something I do uh, in my farm, I, I've actually grown quite a following on my Facebook page in this little area that I live in, and people, whenever I ask them how they heard about me, they all they're like, oh, you're on my Facebook feed for some reason. You always show up on my Facebook. And if someone in my farm likes or comments on one of my posts, I immediately look up their address and I immediately go knock on their door that day or the next day. And I how, say, how Hey, I'm Dean Kenny. I'm, I live in the area. How, how do you know they're all, I'm sorry, says, how do you know they're on the area in your farm when they like it? Well, if it, I'll look at what town they live in, if, if I can find that information, and then I'll look them up in the tax records. No, but you said um, when somebody what's likes, great, it, when somebody likes your post and they're in your farm, then you look them up. But how do you know? Are you looking up everybody who likes your post to see if they're in your farm? Absolutely. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And so, so then so I just, if they I, are, then I, you I, go ahead. Yeah. And then I'll door knock them and say, Hey, I, uh, my name is Dan Kenny. I'm a realtor. I live in the area. And they're like, I know I've seen you on Facebook. And I'm like, really awesome. And then we start a conversation from there. And it's a great way to get, uh, a door knock that is not a weird stranger on your front door. Yeah, so you've got this killer, you know, it's it's funny, we almost will have to do a, another interview maybe on the separate farming thing, but because we're hitting open houses so hard, but it yeah. seems like you've got this incredible strategy where it's almost a full circle where you're, you're lead generating on Facebook, but then you're capturing and cultivating through Facebook, and then you're going on a door knocking with the Facebook branding behind you, which is marketing 101 when it comes to radio and television and Facebook is the same thing. So you're creating this brand awareness and, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's helping you in this full circle and then including your open houses. On your, um, on your Facebook ad, so you're saying that, that you are asking people how they heard about you and you're hearing the majority of them saying Facebook. So on that note, what is in your Facebook ad for your open house? Sure. It is typically um, the best photo of the house. It doesn't necessarily have to be the front of the house. Uh, it could be if the kitchen is the best photo or you got a killer bathroom. You know, I might do a, a couple different photos um, just to tease it. And then it's basically – just open house this Sunday, one to four, uh, for more info. And I usually have a, a link where they can find out more info on the property. 
Um, and I also have a, I have the learn more button where they can go get a home uh, value estimate and I capture leads that way uh, as well. Okay. So, um, are you sending them to a, a, just what, just your general real estate website that has that IDX page property info, or do you have something special you're sending them to? Uh, I'm doing, I, cause I've been doing the smart zip thing for my farm. Okay. So I send them to that, that home price pricing website. Okay, great. I just like to give as much specifics as we can because I know people are going to wait a minute. How do you do that sure. exactly? You know, because that. Okay, so now somebody come, your people come into your open house and you enter, you welcome them. You tell that you know, you ask them the the key question there, and then you let them walk around. You've got you've got snacks out, um, and you. I heard you say music. Do you have like a something you play? Sure. So the way. I look at it, and this is what I talk about in my class all the time and what, why this is so important. I think there's two different approaches to an open house. It can either be what I call the furniture store approach, or where, and you've been to probably a furniture store before and you know what happens the second you walk in the door, uh, which is you're attacked by every salesperson in there and then they follow you around the whole time. It never really allows you to let down your guard and relax. Yeah. Um, or you can take what, what I like to call the cocktail party approach. And that is to create the atmosphere of as if this was a cocktail party in your home for your closest family and friends, and then you treat everybody who comes through the door like that. And I can tell you that the connections you make are, are so much more genuine. They let their guard down much sooner. And yes, I have music playing. I usually have some you know, some drinks and, and, you know, nothing fancy, maybe cookies and water, nothing crazy because they're not there for the food. It's just more of a something for them to do while we very casually chat and yeah. get to know one another. Okay, great. And then on the, out, out where your snacks and water are and stuff, do you have any printed materials out? Yes. I usually have a brochure on the house or a, a um, uh, a flyer or something, and then I usually have information about my business. Although, interestingly, something I learned from Chris that he has done recently is he doesn't have any printed material. He just carries around an iPad and uh, shows them on his iPad, and this is, well, would you like me to send this to you? Great. What's your email and your, and your cell phone number? And then that's how he's capturing um, their contact info. How is that? What does that conversation look like? So the so you've got a um, you've got a um, somebody that walks around the home and they're looking very interested and they spend quite a bit of time and then they're starting to walk by you towards the front door to leave. Is there something sure. that you're at, inviting at that, them? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at that point, I usually it's, it's quite rare that I, that I see people unless that's just who they are. Some people don't want to talk to you and some people just pop in and they get out as fast as they can. Most people I find I'll circle back to them before they're heading for the door um, and just check in and say, you know, how are you doing? What do you, how did you hear about us? What do you, what do you think of the house? And, you know, something very casual. And we, we talk about, and I, and I don't talk much about the house either. I mostly talk about them. So like, do you live in the area? How long have you lived here? What do you like about living here? If you were to move somewhere, where would you move to? Um, you know, things like that. I see. So you're keeping it more cocktail party like, and you're just kind of bringing up. You don't have a set script, but you're bringing up a little bit of general conversation about them. Like, hey, like, do you live in the area? And you're you're, and then you're you're looking to see if they might bring up the conversation around buying a house, rather than you're not just coming right out and saying, "Oh, are you looking to buy a house?" Precisely. It's, I mean, obviously they're looking to buy a house because they're at an open house. So I already know they're either a buyer or a seller or both. Right. And so I, I, I look at it more like dating. Like if you're like people often ask me, um, you know, do I ask them if they're working with an agent? And I say, well, if you were out at a bar or a club and you wanted to pick someone up, you know, as a date, would you go up to them and say, hey, are you dating anybody? You, you wouldn't start the conversation <laughs> that way. You, you know, yeah. you would find you would find out that information because it's very important information to find out because we don't want to solicit another agent's business. However, you're going to go about it in a much more casual way. You're going to get them to warm up to you. Once they've warmed up to you, I usually find that, you know, in the open house situation, 
Then they usually ask me, well, do you have any other properties or would you be willing to stop by and look at my house sometime? I'm like, great, what are you doing today after the open house? I've got nothing planned. And I always leave time open after the open house because I have gone right into listing appointments right from the open house. Yeah, and how about showing homes? Have you, have you ever gone and shown homes in the area right after? Occasionally, I gave someone my app once and I took it and they drove around the neighborhood and found a house and then came back and said, can you go show me this house? Yeah. Um, so you know, it's a little dicey. You want to make sure they're pre-qualified and everything. But I have I have done that occasionally. Yeah. How many open house signs are you putting out? So I always tell people as many as it takes. So I look at a Google map of the neighborhood and I really make it like breadcrumbs to get to that open house from and I do at least four major intersections around the neighborhood so four large branded directional signs that I get out in advance so that people are seeing my name and my phone number um, you know three or four days in advance of the open house and then smaller directional signs through the neighborhood that are leading people directly to the open house so it would be impossible for them to not find me Okay, I love that. I love that you said that very poignantly. Four key intersections with branded open house signs, which is so, so important, especially if you're repeating in your geographic farm, creating that brand awareness and having signs that are consistent with your brand that people see over and over and over and over again. That's that's key. So about how many signs then? If you're doing four intersections, you've got what, two a couple signs on each intersection or just one? Do you have one going each direction? Or? Um, it, it depends on, on the intersection and the layout. Usually at, at least one for the four major intersections. And it's really a simple sign. It's just my name, uh, my phone number, and a rider that says open house and a rider with an arrow pointing the direction of where it is. Uh, and, it will, and it will probably say Sunday one to four. Okay. And what that does is that People go, going to work or going to school get used to seeing that, you know, for a couple of days in a row and go, oh, you know, there's going to be an open house over there. And then the other thing in terms of brand awareness, as you were talking about, every week, the number of signs I have in my village goes up doubles. And so every week it looks like I've got so many more, you know, such a greater presence in that area because I put out all these open house signs. So about how many open house signs per open house? At least. Eight. At least probably with oftentimes, yeah, oftentimes 10 to 12. Okay. Yeah. A, a dozen. I think we used to put up a, about a dozen, but depending on, on your areas and how much opportunity you have to put up those signs. And then when did those go up? Yeah. So the rider on the sign in the yard or the open house sign we're going to put in the yard of the house itself goes up a week in advance. Oh, so, so you're get that out as soon as possible. You're putting an open house sign with the information at, uh, with your yard sign right there on the house. And Absolutely. then you're putting you want out the neighbors to know. Yeah, that makes sense. And then and then when are your directional signs going up? Usually three to four days beforehand. The major intersection one. You're so putting put the major open house signs up directionals up. Three to four days, but what if Oh, but they say the date and time on them is why you can do that. Yeah, they say Sunday 1 to 4. That's really smart. That has and got so, to be helping your attendance. Yeah, so what happens is that people are going to work or to the grocery store every day, and either subliminally or whatever, they're seeing, oh, there's an open house there Sunday. Oh, there's an open house over there Sunday. Oh, there's an open house over there Sunday. And then Sunday rolls around. They're like, what do you want to do today? I don't know. I think there's an open house over there somewhere. Let's go check it out. Yeah, that's smart. Now, are you um, are you paying somebody to put up your signs, or are you doing it yourself? Uh, right now, I'm still doing it myself. Um, however, I am interviewing for a buyer's agent, as you said at the beginning uh, here, who uh, will hopefully be doing that for me. And because it's in, I live in my farm. I literally, uh, it, I can do it on my way home from work. And you know, Sunday morning when I put on my balloons, I literally get up. And I roll out of bed, I grab my coffee, I go get some balloons, and then put them out. I'm home in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, that's you, the nice thing about, about farming where you, where you live. <laughs> are you putting balloons on every sign? Uh, certainly the major 
street directional at the major intersections and then on the house itself. Yeah. Um, it's just sort of that ad added, uh, I use those foil um, ones that shine in the sunlight that added, I call it cat advertising because, you know, it shines and shaky and catches people's attention. Yeah. How much are you spending on average when you do an open house? How much is that costing you to do your ads, your balloons, your refreshments? Sure. Probably, um, um, probably 50 bucks total, um, between refreshments and the boosted posts. And sometimes I'll boost it a little bit more. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get better with my, my Facebook ads as opposed to just boosted posts. Cause I know there's more yeah. um, value in them. I just haven't delved into them yet. enough. Yeah. yeah maybe I'll have to do but it. Not much. I'll have to add a train um a training video on on I'm um, doing Facebook ads for open houses. There's so many so many great ways we can we can do that. Um all right, but it sounds like you're doing yeah. great and you're getting good traffic, you're getting a lot of people who are and you're closing a lot of houses from open houses. So Dan, before we um have to get off here, because we've gone a little bit over time, um, do you think this is a sure. scalable lead generation activity, either farming or the open houses? Is it, do you think it's scalable? Like it farming, yeah, farming without a doubt, because um, obviously you just increase the size of your farm. And that's what I, I did. I started very small, and it's been just growing, you know, every year. I just let it grow out a little bit more, um, and almost organically. With open houses, probably as well, if you're doing more open houses per week. I, I know Chris's team... Everybody on his team is required to do 50 a year. So, um, you know, they're doing open houses every day of the week. That's what I would do. If I were, if I were going to really blow up a physical team again, like we're doing, I'm doing my stuff on web leads and, and I have a team, but they're just converting what I generate. I don't really have them out generating, but if I were to blow it up and say, you know what, I want to do 200 transactions or 300 transactions. That's exactly what I would do. I'd build this big, bad team of people that sit open houses <laughs> and do it like yeah. strategically. I want to be in this, I want to be in Summerlin and I want to sign on every single yard every day. And that's exactly, I think if I were a new agent, it's same thing. You're, you know, Converting web leads, sure, if you, uh, generating web leads is my bag, but it takes a lot of time or it takes a lot of money because you're if you're going to build search engine sure. rankings, you got to put in some some stuff. If you're going to buy pay per click, you got to have the money to do it. If I were a brand new agent, I would say, you know what, I can do my SEO, I can do my Facebook, I can do all that stuff, but I can do it while sitting in an open house and 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 get both you know i can exactly. do my digital stuff but i'll sit at open house but i'm going to do it strategically and purposefully and i'm going to advertise it and i'm going to put out tons of signs and i'm going to have a method to the madness and make sure that i'm 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 getting as much as i can i'm not just going to throw up a sign and go sit in a yard like i see so many agents do i'm going to be purposeful about it and really really work it which is exactly what you've done which is why you've caught my attention because you're doing it very, very purposefully and strategically, and you're one that actually has the conversions and the sales to prove it. So um, what advice would you give to anybody who's who wants to follow your footsteps in the open houses? Sure. I, I would say, you know, follow the system. It's all about the, uh, the leading up to it. You know, look at SHIP. Look at that seventh level open house marketing system. Um, and really that week, Leading up to the open house, that's your job. Every phone call you make, every email you send, every text you send, every Facebook post you do, mention, mention the open house. Um, and then for a brand new agent, uh, get, uh, find a vacant house, go there with your laptop and your hotspot every day, and make that your office. Yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. What I would ask you to do, Dan, for me is since I'm going to be putting this in our blog as well, I do a full write up and a transcription and captions and all that. I would love it if you could send me a picture of your open house sign, as simple as it is, but maybe, sure. maybe if you've got one of the art of the house sign that has the writer on it, but at least the ones that are that go in the in the corner sections. And just whenever you do your no, next open house is fine, no hurry. But and then I would love it also to get oh, a. Huh? 
I, I've got them. They're included in the slideshow in the PowerPoint that I do for my class. So I've got pictures of all my oh, clients. Perfect. I've got pictures of the seventh level. Yeah, anything so like that that you. that you can send me that I can give people visuals of this is what it looks like because I think that's very helpful for, yeah. for people. So, um, all right. So I will put your contact information and everything in the write-up. If anybody wants to send you a real estate referral, I'm sure you would appreciate that. And you're at uh, dankennyholmes.com, sure. 70, oops, I need my glasses, 708629. Six four five two, and you're at Dan Kenny at kw.com. Anything else they need to know about contacting you? That's perfect. All right, Dan, that was very, very informational. I really appreciate you being patient and helping me break that down for for people that they can they can um, they can learn from the best. You learn from Chris, and people can learn from you, and that's that's how this whole chain works, especially at at Keller Williams with the training that we have here. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And, um, and I look forward to seeing you in the, in the are you going to be at the Keller Williams convention? Family reunion? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll see. Yeah. I'll see you in Anaheim. All right. I will see you in Anaheim. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Lord. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.